Welcome back. Last week, we started our new unit on the book of John. If you missed it, you should pause this video, go back and watch it, and then watch this one with your family tomorrow or something. Digital Kids Church at least means you never have to miss out. So who wrote the book of John? John, and what is it about? It's about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. How many different stories like that are there in the Bible, and what are their names? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Which one is the special different one? John is, and what is special about it that we talked about last week? John's gospel was written last, and it spends more time explaining what things mean. John chose certain specific events from Jesus' life to record so that we might believe that Jesus was the Son of God and have life in his name. So let's dive in. Let's start by playing a fun true and false game about who the disciple John was. I'm going to say a fact about John. And if it's true, I want you guys to run to one side of the room and you guys should decide right now which side is the true side and which side is the false side. Or if you don't have enough room where you're watching this, you could stand up if it's true and crouch down if it's false, something like that. Okay, ready? Figure out the rules of your game. You guys can pause the video if you need to. John was a fisherman. John was a tax collector. John was one of the three special of the 12 disciples that Jesus spent the most time with. John was the disciple who betrayed Jesus. John saw the transfiguration of Jesus. John saw Jesus when he was a baby. John was the only male disciple at the cross. John baptized people. John went to the tomb Sunday morning with Peter. John did not believe Jesus had rose from the dead until he put his fingers in the nail holes. John died as an old man on an island prison. John was killed in an arena with lions. I hope you had fun playing that game. And if you didn't read chapter one at home last week, you can catch up on it this week. So let's open our Bibles to John one, and we're going to read the first five verses. In the beginning, the word was already there. The word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through him. Nothing that has been made was made without him. Life was in him and that life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome the light. Does this beginning of John sound like the beginning of another book of the Bible? Can you think of one like in the beginning, like Genesis chapter one, the very beginning of the Bible? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth didn't have any shape and it was empty. And there was darkness over the surface of the waves. And at that time, the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. John intentionally writes his opening poem to remind us of the beginning of the Old Testament, to help us understand how cosmic, how huge, how essential everything John is about to write is. How cosmic and huge and essential Jesus is. We're going to be detectives and figure out now who the word is that John keeps talking about. In the beginning, the word was already there. The word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The word was with God and was God. That's really weird. How can someone or something 
be someone else, but also be with someone else. Because if you are someone else, then how could you be with them? You can't. If you are with someone, that means you're different from them, right? Unless... Where was the word in the beginning? The word was with God. What was the word doing in the beginning? Who does this sound like? Jesus is the word. Jesus is God. He is with God and he is God. Like the Trinity we've talked a lot about in past weeks. Jesus was always with God. He wasn't created at Christmas. He wasn't separated from God at Christmas. He was not like a piece of God broken off. He was always with God and always was God. Let's look back again at Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth didn't have any shape and it was empty. And there was darkness over the surface of the world. And at that time, the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. In the beginning of Genesis, we see the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God the Father creating. The Holy Spirit hovering over us. And the word of God speaking and creating. Who is the word of God? Jesus. John tells us Jesus is the word, the word of God. Okay, want to learn a fancy Greek word? He's the logos. Okay, everyone say that with me. Logos, the word. Let's keep going in this opening poem of John. There was a man sent from God, and his name was John. He came to be a witness about that light. He was a witness so that all people might believe. John himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Is this talking about the John who wrote the book of John? No. This is John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. So this can get kind of confusing. And we're going to spend some time learning the difference between John the disciple who wrote John and John the Baptist. What does this opening part of John say that John the Baptist's job was? His job was be a witness to the light. What's a witness? A witness is someone who sees something and then tells people what they saw. And who's the light that he's supposed to be a witness to? Jesus. Let's get to know John the Baptist a little bit better. God's story, John the Baptist. So part of God's story is about a man we call John the Baptist, and it begins like this. Hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born, a man named Isaiah wrote that somebody would come to prepare people for Jesus' arrival. He was talking about a guy named John the Baptist. Well, actually, his name was John. We call him the Baptist because he baptized a lot of people. Anyway, before John was even born, an angel appeared to his dad and said, Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your wife Elizabeth will have a child. It will be a boy, and you must name him John. He will be important in the Lord's eyes. John was important because he would get people ready for Jesus, who was coming to rescue us. Did we mention that John was Jesus' cousin? Pretty crazy, huh? Well, right from the beginning, John was a bit unusual. For starters, he spent the first part of his life in the wilderness. Maybe he slept on the ground and used rocks for pillows. Maybe he brushed his teeth with sticks. Maybe he used leaves as toilet paper. We don't know. All the Bible tells us is that he stayed in the desert until he started telling people about Jesus. Then, when he came back into civilization, he still seemed strange. He wore clothes made out of camel's hair and a leather belt. Imagine how itchy hairy clothes must have been. And for food, he ate locusts dipped in honey, just like he had eaten in the desert. You know what a locust is? It's a grasshopper. But don't worry, you don't have to eat bugs to follow Jesus. Anyway, John didn't come back from the desert to live like everybody else. He came back to teach people about Jesus. 
While John was baptizing and teaching, some people thought he might be the rescuer. He seemed really smart, and he knew a lot about God. But John knew he needed Jesus to rescue him, just like everybody else. So he said, someone who is more powerful than I am will come. I'm not good enough to untie the straps of his sandals. John was making a point by talking about Jesus' feet. See, back then, everyone's feet were almost always dirty because they wore sandals, stepped in dust and camel poop, and didn't have showers. So when John said he wasn't good enough to untie Jesus' sandals, he was basically saying that he would feel lucky if he could help Jesus with his dirty feet. That's how much John loved Jesus. Well, even though John told everybody about Jesus, he was actually waiting for the rescue too. We'll hear more about John the Baptist next week. But let's finish reading that opening poem of John. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. The Word, that's Jesus, was in the world and the world was made through him because Jesus created the world. But the world did not recognize him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. Some people did accept him and did believe in his name, and he gave them the right to become children of God. To be a child of God has nothing to do with human parents. Children of God are not born because of human choice or because a husband wants them to be born. They are born because of what God does. What does it mean that he came to what was his own, like that Jesus came to what was his own? The word Jesus made the world and people, so they were his own. But what does it mean that they didn't accept him? They didn't believe he was God, and so they killed him for saying he was God. What does John say can happen if we do accept him and believe in his name? We can become children of God. We are all created by God in his image. But unless we want to accept him, then we're not in a right relationship with the father. We can only become children through the son. And we're going to hear a lot more about that later in John. Verse 14. The word became a human being. That's what we just talked about at Christmas time. Emmanuel, God with us. He made his home with us and we have seen his glory and it is the glory of the one and only who came from the Father. And the word was full of grace and truth. Who is the word? Jesus. And who is the we? Now as in, we have seen his glory. This now is John the disciple, the writer of the book. He says we, because he is speaking on behalf of a group of disciples that saw Jesus' glory. He is emphasizing that he is the firsthand eyewitness to the glory of Jesus. In this opening poem, these first 14 verses, John is setting up a lot of the themes and ideas that he's gonna keep coming back to in the book of John. Like that big picture, little picture mosaic thing we talked about. Like an overture in a, a, a movie. And kids, you probably don't know what this is, but like at the beginning of a movie, you might hear music that's gonna come up throughout the movie. Like the best example I can think of is Star Wars, where there's a special music for Leia, and there's a special music for Luke, and there's a special music for Vader. And you might hear some of those musics at the beginning, and then you hear them and recognize them throughout the movie. Or maybe, um, I, I think of the beginning of Paw Patrol, and there's like the Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol song, and you see little clips of all the different characters and all the things and famous parts from the movie, or I mean from the show. And watching those helps you when you get into watching the whole show to recognize the characters and recognize the themes of what's going on. That's what these first 14 verses are. They're setting up the themes of the whole book of John. Throughout John, you're going to hear a lot more about things we read in these first 14 verses, like about the light, that Jesus and the Father are one, the world being God's children, and most of all, the idea of believing in Jesus, putting your trust in Jesus. 
These images, like the light and darkness one, are repeated over and over in John, building all those meanings together. For example, here's a picture. Is this person a good guy or a bad guy? How do you know? Even if you've never seen Star Wars, and this character is just a made-up one by a fan, it's not even from the movies, how do you know this is definitely a bad guy? Well, he's wearing all black, he has a mask, and he has a red lightsaber. Those are all things that from other parts of Star Wars, you know those are like bad guy things. So in John, for example, there's all these images of light and dark. So we learn as we're reading John that light and seeing are tied to believing in Jesus. And darkness is tied to unbelief and sin. These common themes and images are something to look for as you're reading John. And we've tried to help you out in the printed book of John you're going to get soon. Every time one of these main themes is mentioned, there's a symbol that relates to it to help you notice those patterns. Now, if you haven't read John 1 yet, why don't you stop at the end of watching Kids Church and do that now and get caught up. And then before next Sunday, read John 2 and chapter 3 as a family. And don't forget to use the link below to fill out for your digital raffle tickets. We've got some great prizes. Let's pray. Today, parents, kids, take some time. Parents, maybe you can go first and then have each of your kids pray for something. Thank God for making you, that Jesus, the Word, made you. And thank Him that He became a human taking on flesh so that he could be with us. Okay, you guys ready to play one more game? I want you to use those two areas in your house again, like we did for true and false, except this time one of them is going to be for John the disciple and one of them is going to be for John the Baptist. And again, if you don't have room for that, you can maybe jump up for John the Baptist then crouch down real low for John the disciple. I'm gonna say some things and they're true about either John the Baptist or John the disciple. Are you ready? He wrote the book of John. So was that John the Baptist or John the disciple? He baptized Jesus. He was a fisherman. He ate bugs and honey. He was Jesus' cousin. He was at the cross when Jesus died. He was imprisoned and beheaded while Jesus was still alive. I hope you had fun. For today's craft, you have two choices. For older kids and also parents, I highly encourage you to participate. Look at the first 14 verses of John and pick a word or a phrase that you can illustrate. For example, maybe you want to do the one about he gave us the right to become children of God and you can draw a picture of that. Or maybe you want to do he was a light in the darkness and you want to do a picture of that. Pick one of those phrases and illustrate it because this beautiful poem is super cool and kind of hard to understand. So it'll be a great way to help you understand it more. Now, if that's a little tricky, I suggest for younger ones, here's what you can do. Draw a picture of John the Baptist, but what kind of clothes did John the Baptist wear? Yeah, he wore itchy, scratchy camel hair clothes. So instead of coloring the area of his clothes, go outside or maybe around your house, do a little bit of a scavenger hunt and find something that instead of coloring his clothes, you could paste on for his clothes that would make really good itchy, scratchy looking clothes. So have fun doing that. And don't forget to put your pictures in the Google slide link below. Then you can see what other people have done and you can be entered in the contest for next week. Ah, speaking of the contest, here are last week's awesome entries for the question of what thing in Jesus' life you most wish you were an eyewitness to.
There are some great things that kids did here that yes, I wish I was an eyewitness to all of them. And here is this week's winner. Congratulations. I can't wait to see what you guys all do this week and we'll see you next week.